Hey guys, this is Colin Moshman for CardsChat.com, and we are continuing on right now with me and Katie's course, Become a Winning Poker Player in 30 Days. The topic of day five is pot odds and expected value. So starting tomorrow, we're going to be moving on to more direct strategy concepts, like what hands to play from what positions, the types of bets and raises, and a lot of fun stuff like that. Today, though, we have our last big final preliminary concepts and pot odds and expected value, and they're actually really cool. So I want to start off with pot odds, and the definition is really simple, just total pot size divided by the cost to call. You noticed I have found the sweet division kind of symbol for Google Spreadsheets looking good. And let's look at an example of pot odds. So in this example, our opponent is about 50 into a pot of 100. And the first thing is that if the pot size displays as 100 bucks and your opponent bets 50 bucks, then for this definition, okay, for the left side, total pot size is the existing pot plus what your opponent has bet. Okay, so once he bets 50 into 100, that means that there's 150 in the middle, and so your pot odds are going to be 150 total pot to 50, which is the amount of cost to call, which is the same as 3 to 1. So that's how you calculate it. It's pretty direct how to do that. But the question is, why do you want to calculate your pot odds? And it's going to be very useful in a lot of contexts, including draws when we get there. But the basic thing that pot odds do is they answer a question, which is how often do you need to win in order to make this call profitable? And basically, the really key thing here is the answer to this question is not 50%. And that's one of the absolute biggest things to understand today while watching this video, and in fact, generally in poker. And I would even say this is going to immediately put your understanding above a lot of other players, even some pretty good ones from what I've seen, which is that you don't need to have the best hand the majority of the time in order to call a bet because it's a lopsided gamble. There's more money in the middle for you to win than it costs for you to call. So it could be possible that your opponent has the best hand the vast majority of the time, but you're still correct to call based on the pot odds. And one thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go back into the day five section of the book and the table that Katie and I put in there answers this question. So it'll give you a percent that you need to be correct based on the pot odds that you're getting. Now, one really important note that I've got to put in here, which is that future betting complicates things. In other words, this is going to only answer the question if we're facing a bet at the river or if our opponent has shoved on us so that we're closing the action. And when that's not the case, pot odds are still useful. It's still very important you know how to calculate pot odds. We're gonna look at those examples. But if you wanna say, I'm getting two to one pot odds and therefore I need to have the best hand 33% of the time, like our table indicates, then that analysis, there are gonna be other aspects to it if there's future betting. So we're gonna build on this idea when we get to implied odds in a future section. Now, the other topic we're talking about today is expected value, which answers the question, how much money will I make or lose in the long run from this action if I took it a million times? Okay, so I'm thinking about shoving the flop with a flush draw, and if I do that right now, you know, I'm either going to win the current pot or I'm going to lose the cost of this bluff. But if I do this a million times, am I gonna win 20 bucks or lose five bucks? So your expected value is the answer to that question. And it's always going to be zero for a neutral action, so we always take checking or folding to be our neutral EV point. And we talked in the last video about plus EV. Okay, so plus EV just means an action has EV greater than zero. Or another way to look at it like we saw is an action is plus EV. That means that we gain equity in the long run. So these are very related concepts. Um, since expected value is money that we win or lose, equity is the money. So these are how these concepts relate, and we're gonna look more at that. Now one other important thing is that pot odds, equity, and EV are very related. So as an example, okay, let's say that somebody shoves on us, okay, they move all in, and we think that we have 40% equity 
versus our opponent's range. So we looked at how to calculate equity versus range with, for example, a program like Equilab, and then we can say, are the pot odds that we're getting good enough? Okay, so if we have 40% equity, that means that we think if we click the call button, 40% of the time we're going to win. The majority of the time we're going to lose. But if we're getting good enough pot odds, we should go ahead and make that call. And if you look at the table that Katie and I have in this chapter, you'll see that three to two pot odds. So for example, this would be like the pot is 150 and it costs us 100 to call that three to two pot odds are going to be just good enough to make a call when we have 40% equity against our opponent's range. So this is going to be the basics of today. And now I wanna put this into action by looking at several hand examples. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in these hands that I've pulled up for us to look at, what we're going to be focusing on is pot odds and expected value in these concepts. But on the earlier streets and in other actions that we take, there's strategy there too, of course. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but the key focus is going to be on the odds and the percentages. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So Hero is going to raise pocket sevens from the cutoff in a six max table with one player absent and makes a bad like we'll see this is called a continuation bat our opponent check raises pretty small and so one thing we can say right now is well, what pot odds are we getting and we're getting pot odds of over three to one so the pot is 1350 and it costs us about 400 to call and so poker tracker is displaying the pot odds but you can also use a calculator so for example when you're playing online poker it's it's an open book test for the most part you are perfectly allowed to use a calculator so right now even as i'm talking i'm putting 1350 divided by 400 the approximate call amount and it displays 3.375 so we're getting odds of about 3.4 to 1. so we call again though there's future betting so that complicates things. The turn goes check. You was checking back with a gut shot and a pair that might be good. This is a correct play. And the street I'm really interested in now is the river. Okay, so our opponent bets full pot. And what odds are we getting? Okay, so anytime that our opponent bets exactly the pot, that means that there's two times out there compared to our call amount. So in other words, relative to pot size amounts, the pot is 1746 times two, a cost is 1746 to call. So now we can see that way pretty quickly that we're getting two to one pot odds. And therefore we need to be correct 33% of the time. If we have the best hand one third of the time or more, we're going to show a profit by calling. And here I believe the answer is that we do. So our opponent could have a missed flush draw our opponent could have a missed straight draw, could have absolutely nothing. So I don't know if we're good here half the time, but the bar is much lower. We only need to be good a third of the time. And for that reason, I believe Hero should call. Hero does, and we lose. This does not mean that we were wrong. It just means that our opponent had a better hand this time. It's not a big surprise, but I do like the way that Hero has played this hand. Now we're gonna take another look at an example from a heads up pot. I believe this is going to be heads up in the spin and go. Hero raises jack five offsuit, which is fine. We're going to have wider ranges from the button or small blind position and heads up. So typically, of course, we're in a full jack five offsuit pre, but heads up is the one time when you can raise this hand, and that's a nice play. Hero puts out the continuation bet. Opponent calls. And I would actually like to see Hero continue betting because of the fact that we're heads up with relatively short stacks. But Hero checks, this is fine. So what I wanna focus on again is the river action. So our opponent bets 30 into 240. That means that the pot is 270. It costs us 30 to call. So we're getting pot odds of 270 to 30, which equals nine to one. Okay, so getting pot odds of nine to one, we need to be correct 10% of the time in order to make the call. So that means we should call if we think we're correct at least as often. We don't need to be right half the time, only 10% of the time. 
So calling does seem like a reasonable play. But I want to use this hand to point one other thing out, which is that just because we're getting the odds to call doesn't mean we have to, because we have other options too. We can fold, we can call, or we can raise. So we can think, hey, it's profitable to call, but maybe it's more profitable to raise. And these very small river bets tend to look weak. So a lot of the time, this is going to be some kind of hand that might be the best hand. It's not a total bluff, but it's not very strong. It's usually not going to be a straight or a flush. So I think raising the river is going to be the best play here. However, because of the pot odds, I would at least call. Let's see what Hero does. Hero does make the call. We lose to uh, two pair. So while I would have preferred raising the river, this is our analysis of getting a small bet, getting 10 to 1 odds or 9 to 1 odds, and being able to call a lot wider compared to if we faced a bigger bet. So we have one more hand to look at before we get to today's big quiz question. Here opens with the pocket nines. By opens, I just mean raises. Checking back is good. Betting will be okay as well. And our opponent bets. Here we are getting odds of three and a half to one. So if you look at the table in the book, you can always look in between two numbers. So if it says, for example, three to one means that we need to be right 25% of the time. Four to one means we need to be right 20% of the time. Three and a half to one, we expect to be in between those two numbers. Sure enough, it is at 22%. And so here we need to think, okay, well, we don't beat all that much, but we haven't bet any post-flop straight. Our opponent might just think we have nothing. And so we can call pretty wide. We may not be good half the time, but we think we're gonna be right at least 22% of the time. And that is why Hero calls in this hand and has the best hand against eight high. So a neat little hand there, and this is gonna bring us to today's quiz question. So get ready for that, get your pencils out. So we're back to a six max spot. One player absent from the table, the small blind is going to complete the extra 60 chips. Hero could raise, checking is fine. And Hero checks the flop Ace high is often going to be the best hand. We don't want to play a big pot. Checking back this flop is fine. And Hero calls the turn because of the fact that he thinks that there's a good chance that he has the best hand here with his ace high after the queen pairs. Now, the river comes and we're going to advance an action and I need to do one thing to the screen. All right, so what have I just done? I have blinded you guys with this picture of an incredibly cute cat. Now, why have I done that? I've done that because Poker Tracker wants to display pot odds and the percent of the time you need to be correct. And I don't want it to do that because I want to pose this as the quiz question. So what we've seen so far is that here is check back pre-flop, check back the flop, called a turn bet, and is now facing a bet on the river. So... This quiz question has three parts. Part one is what pot odds is Hero getting? Part two is what percent of the time does Hero have to be correct to call this bet? And optional part three is do you think that Hero should call? So pause the video, come up with your answers. You can use a calculator, you can use a pen and paper, you can use a spreadsheet, you can use whatever you want. Okay, so let's answer this question. So in order to calculate the pot odds, we know that the pot is going to be the existing amount in the middle, 555, plus the 375 that our opponent bets. There's a 930 pot. And we divide that by the cost of calling, which is 375, and we get 2.48 to 1. So we're getting about 2.5 to 1, and that's the answer to part 1. The answer to part 2 is that we know that 2 to 1 pot odds means you need to be good about a third of the time. Okay, I have 33% that you win. And 3 to 1 corresponds to needing to be correct 25% of the time. So here, this is going to mean about 28, 29%, somewhere around there. It's see what Poker Tracker has that. 
And you don't need to give this exactly. The important thing is that you give some figure between 25 and 33 percent. Uh, probably 26 and 27 are going to be a little bit low. Probably 31 and 32 are going to be a little bit high. So 29 percent, um, anything around there is going to count as a win. So if you got those two correct, then you're ready to move on to tomorrow. And let's give a last answer, which is, is here correct a call? And I would say here the correct answer is definitely yes. And this is more of a hand reading kind of exercise that we'll talk about in the future. But as a sneak peek into that, for one thing, there are two nines and two queens already accounted for. That makes it harder for our opponent to have one. Our opponent hasn't shown a lot of strength like he probably would have if he had one of those strong hands. If he had a higher pocket pair, he probably would have raised before the flop. So it's difficult for him to have a lot of very strong hands here. And it's a lot easier for him to have nothing, for him to have some kind of hand like 8-3, and he's just randomly trying to bluff us off of this hand. So I think we're going to have the best hand significantly more often than this 29%, and here should call. In fact, here does call. Let's get to a showdown. And our opponent had pocket threes, so a counterfeited pocket pair that is now playing the board here. And here wins the pot. So that is going to end today's section on pot odds and expected value. Two very cool concepts and the last of the big final prelim concepts before we get to more of the strategy and meat of it all. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Colin Moshman for CardsChat.com and the Become a Winning Poker Player in 30 Days course with me and Katie Dozier.